Okay, guys, question eight is where I know a lot of you start to struggle because it is your Euclidean geometry, but I'm going to walk it through with you guys and hopefully you will understand. So let's take a look. It says in the diagram, O is the center of the circle and LOM is a diameter of the circle. Okay, before we go anywhere, they're saying that this line here, LOM, is the diameter. So what does a diameter do? It subtends 90 degrees on the circumference. Okay. Very important, fill that in. Then it says that ON bisects chord LP at N. Okay, another very important point. If this is the center and we have a line going from the center to a chord and it bisects the chord, what does it do? It has a 90 degrees. Because remember, line from center to the middle of a chord bisects the chord, okay? We also know that this is a radius and that is a radius. So th those two lines are equal, okay? T and S are points on the circle on the other side of LM with respect to P, okay? So that's just saying that these two points sit on the other side of M with respect to P. So P sits on this side of M and these two sit on that side of M. Okay, not excessively important, but also important. Then it says chords PM, MS, MT and ST are drawn. They're basically just saying that all of those chords sit on the circumference of the circle. Um, lastly, it says that PM is equal to MS. These two lines are equal to each other and angle MTS is 31 degrees. Okay, so guys, before you even start with your questions, try and establish what information you have in your circle. Okay, so if we look here, this chord MS obviously subtends this angle of 31 degrees, but it also subtends an angle at the center. I hope you guys agree with me. And remember, angle subtended at the center is equal to two times the angle subtended at the circumference. Remember, if you've got a situation like this, angle at center is equal to two times angle at circumference. This one just looks like that. Okay, so that's very important. Also, if chords are given as equal, equal chords subtend equal angles. So this angle here is also 31 degrees. Okay. Very important. And I think that is probably all the information that we can get out of this diagram right now. So 8.1.1 says determine with reasons, very important guys, you need to prove your Euclidean arguments, the size of each of the following angles. So angle MOS, okay, that's this angle here at the center. And we found that it is 62 degrees. MOS is equal to 62 degrees. Why? Because the angle at the center is equal to two times the angle at the circumference. Easy peasy. B says determine the size of L with reasons. Angle L, ha, huh, you see guys, we've already filled this in. Angle L is equal to 31 degrees. Because equal chords subtend equal angles. Very easy. 8.1.2 says prove that the line ON is equal to half the length of MS. Okay, so ON is this line here. And MS is that line there. Okay, but remember... MS is equal to PM. So if we can prove that ON is equal to half PM, which seems a lot more simple because it's in the same triangle, we can prove that it's equal to MS. Okay, so if we look in this triangle here, this yellow triangle, we know that this point here is the midpoint of this side LP because we were given that these two sides are equal. So N is the midpoint. We also know that N1 is 90 degrees because of line from center bisecting the chord is perpendicular to the chord. 
and we also know that P is 90 degrees because of angle in a semicircle. So let's write that down. N1 is equal to 90 degrees. Line from center bisects chord is perpendicular to the chord. Okay, and we found that angle P is 90 degrees because of angle in a semicircle. So what you could do is either prove that this little triangle over here, LNO, is similar to LPM, but that's going to take a while. So I'm going to say rather that because this is a midpoint here, oh, now we can conclude that those lines are parallel. Therefore, line NO is parallel to PM because corresponding angles are equal. And now, guys, because we've proved that these two lines are parallel, if I have a triangle that does this, and I know that that is the midpoint, and we have a line there that's parallel to that one, we can conclude by midpoint theorem that this here is half of that hole there. And again, that this here is half of this hole here. Okay, so remember, by midpoint theorem, therefore, ON is equal to one half PM by midpoint theorem. Okay, but remember it was given to us that PM is equal to MS, given, and therefore ON is equal to one half MS. Okay, which is what we had to prove in the first place. Otherwise, guys, you could definitely use similarity. You could say that in this triangle, we've got 90 degrees and a 90 degrees. This angle here is um, included. It's uh, common to both of those triangles. And then therefore, this would be the remaining angle. And because this line here is half of that line there, this line here must be half of that line there. You could very easily use similarity. But I chose to use midpoint theorem. Okay, so guys, when you get your geometry riders, please, please, please just read the love letter that they give you at the beginning and understand what each of those facts means. If it says this is a diameter, know that there's automatically a 90 degrees on the circumference. Okay, guys, just make sure you read, you fill in stuff on your diagram and you give reasons. Guys, half of your marks come from the reasons. Okay, that's question eight.